Welcome back to People Analytics in Excel, Employee Attrition. Today we're going to continue our series on interpreting our model outputs. So before we begin looking at our actual model data, I just want to discuss metrics real quick. So what we're often presented with, the, the metric that we're given immediately right up front when we do a logistic regression, or really any classifier uh, anywhere in machine learning, is our model accuracy, which is pretty simple, right? You take the number of predictions you got right, you divide it by the total number of predictions, you multiply it by 100, you get a number. So if you get 90% of your predictions right, your model accuracy is 90%. Super straightforward. But model accuracy, as I'm going to demonstrate in this video, is not always a useful way of figuring out whether your model is actually giving you useful results, right? Because sometimes it's not so much important how accurate the model is as it is where it makes its mistakes. Is, does it give you more false positives or more false negatives? What is the impact or importance of your various types of errors? Now we're going to see in this particular example that that's extremely relevant. Another way that we can measure uh, in a business context this, the success of something is by calculating a return on investment or ROI. It's pretty common uh, and a lot of people use this by default just because they're familiar with it because they've heard of it before. To calculate ROI we take our net profit from our investment, divide it by the total investment, multiply it by 100, and we get a percentage. If that percentage is greater than 100, then we know that we at least made our money back. If it's less, we know that we didn't, and so on and so forth. Another way of evaluating the effectiveness of a program is to simply look at the bottom line impact on the organization's finances. So if we're talking about a program to prevent employees from leaving the company, we're going to spend a certain amount of money to do that. Uh, to the extent that we're successful in preventing people from leaving, we're going to save money that we otherwise would have spent hiring their replacements or, or just not making revenue because we didn't have somebody in that position. So that net savings to the organization is another way of evaluating program effectiveness. So here we are looking again at the results of our logistic regression. All right. So this is with the default numbers. Now, you'll remember from the last video, I changed the predicted success and failure to leave and stay just because that's easier for us to interpret. So it's saying these are our predictions for whether an employee was going to leave or stay, and this is our observed values for whether they actually did leave or stay. You can say that our model right off the cuff has 89.9% accuracy, which is pretty good. We could be happy about that. Now, I made a few simplifying assumptions just for the sake of demonstrating the concepts in this video. The first is that uh, for our retention program in this scenario, uh, for employees that we identify as wanting to leave the company, we're going to spend $2,000 to retain them. All right, 50% of the time, we're going to be successful. The cost of an employee leaving and having to be replaced is $30,000. So if the employee leaves, it costs us $30,000. If we retain them, we save $30,000. Now, I can figure out the cost of the incentive program by taking the total number of employees that I predict are going to leave, that's this number here, multiplying it by the cost of incentivizing them to stay, and then I can get the savings to the business by figuring out what 30,000 times half of this number is, and then I can get the bottom line impact by simply subtracting the cost from the uh, the savings or just this is a negative number in this case as you can see by the parentheses so I'm adding them together and I'm getting my savings of 1.2 million dollars to the company I'm calculating my ROI here as well so return on investment on this $278,000 is 533% all right so the savings of the business is almost five and a half times what we're actually spending so here's what I want to point out let's talk about this cutoff score and what it means all right the cutoff score is basically a probability. So our logistic regression for every individual employee is determining a value that is a probability that that individual will leave the company or not. So if the probability that the employee will leave the company is more than 50% according to the model, then it'll assign, because the cutoff score is 50%, the model will say that employee is going to leave. If the probability that they're going to leave according to the model is less than 50%, the model predicts that they will stay. Now I want you to notice how all the numbers up here in my classification table change when I change this number here. So I'm going to change it to 0.75. Right? So now I'm saying if the likelihood is 
70 is greater than 75 percent they're going to leave i predict they leave if it's less than that i predict they stay and watch my numbers and also watch my false positive right here right so i've got my false positive and my false negative rates Let's see dramatic change all right overall model, model accuracy is decreased to 86.9 so not a great deal but a little bit my false positive rate has gone from 18 percent all the way down to 4.2 and my false negative rates risen to 13.4 percent so you can see my ROI goes up to 623 percent but my bottom line impact has gone down to only five hundred thousand dollars now the reason for that is simply this and this here is the crux of what I'm trying to get at in this video what is the cost of a false positive a false positive is when I predict that somebody's going to leave but they stay so if I predict somebody's going to leave, I'm automatically spending $2,000 to try to get them to stay. And that's the total cost of that because they don't end up leaving me. So I'm not actually saving any money. I'm not saving the $30,000 because they weren't going to leave anyway. I'm spending $2,000. Now consider the cost of a false negative. I predict they're going to stay, but they leave. So I spend no money up front, but then I lose $30,000 trying to replace them. So the cost of a false negative is $30,000. So basically what it comes down to is... In terms of bottom line impact, I want to get that false negative rate as low as I can. And that's going to increase this bottom line score. But by increasing the cutoff value, I increase the ROI because the fewer people I predict are going to leave, the less I spend on the incentive program. And for the handful that I end up keeping who are going to leave, you know, I make a lot of, I save a lot of money. But the actual impact of the business is significantly less than it should be. So ROI in this context is a really bad metric, and so is accuracy. Well, we what we'll find out here, what I'm going to demonstrate in a second, is that bottom line impact is what really matters. So let's go back to our original cutoff score of 0.5. We can see that savings to business is almost a million and a half dollars. Bottom line impact after cost of the program is 1.2 million. So let's cut that in half. Let's go to 0.25. So now if we calculate a probability that the employee leaves of greater than 25%, we're going to just go ahead and assume they're planning to leave. And you can see that my bottom line impact now, even with the cost of the incentive program significantly increasing, my bottom line savings to the company is now a million and a half dollars. And I can keep toying around with this value, bring it down to 0.2, goes up a little bit. Let me try 0.15, goes up another $12,000, nothing crazy. All right, so we'll leave it there for now. But notice this, the ROI now has decreased to 262%. That is about half of what it was before. So again, the, you know, this illustrates the fact that ROI in this context is not a very good metric for what we really care about. You can see accuracy has decreased from 89.9 to 77.7%. That's 22.2 points that it's decreased. But again, it's irrelevant because what we care about is the impact on the firm's bottom line. The important thing really is right here. The false negatives, which cost us so much money, have been decreased to less than 5%. False positives, which cost us very little, have risen to almost 60%. But it all buffs out here, where I'm spending about $940,000 for this program now, but I'm saving two and a half million bucks, and the bottom line savings to the company is a million and a half dollars. And this, in a nutshell, is what I'm trying to get at, is that Really thoroughly understanding what the business case is of this model is key in the interpretation of these model results because at the end of the day, nobody cares about the accuracy of your model. Nobody cares about coefficients or anything, any of the statistical jargon that comes out of these models. What people care about is how it relates to actual business outcomes. And so in this particular case, if I was going to try to build a business case on the back of this model, what I would focus on would be this bottom line impact, reducing this false negative rate, and then building a retention strategy that at the lowest possible cost produces the highest possible retention rate among the people that we predict are leaving. So that's my two cents. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you like what you're seeing here, please click on the bottom of your screen on the subscribe button and join us uh, as future videos come out. And in the meantime, I wish you happy learning.